welcome to this Plant Factory quick tip. The 2021.2 release adds several workflow improvements to the node graph, so let's have a look. There is now a minimap navigator, which can be used for navigating through the graph quickly. It can be enabled or displayed in the graph menu. Also in the graph menu, you will find an option to enable a background grid. You can force nodes to snap to the grid when you move them in the graph. Just enable this option here, and when you then move a node, it will snap to the grid. This also works when the grid is hidden. The nodes will still snap while the option is still enabled. To quickly arrange all nodes along the grid spacing, choose Align all nodes on grid now. Now we're going to explore some node connection improvements. Connection lines are drawn a bit thicker than in previous releases and they've received better highlighting when you hover over them. And if you wish, you can customize the color schemes of all node connections, node types and all other graph properties in the program options. So now I'm just going to zoom into this graph so that not every node is visible in the current field of view. So let's say I would want to connect a node that is currently outside of the field of view. When I click and drag the connection line to the edge of the window, the graph will automatically start scrolling while I'm still holding down the mouse button. And when I release the button over a node input or output, the connection snaps into place. This is a subtle change, but it's a real time saver and it makes working with the graph just feel a lot smoother. For any parameter that is driven by another node, you can also click on the name and directly jump to the connected node in the graph. Next, let's look at the nodes themselves. They've received a slight facelift in their design, but what's more interesting is the ability to now resize them to any vertical or horizontal size you want. Just grab the top right corner and start resizing. This is especially handy when you have texture nodes, colors or noises or filters, because with a right click on the node, you can show a preview which adapts to the resizing of the node. While I was resizing the nodes, you might have seen a red icon appearing on screen for a moment. This icon is an indicator that two nodes are currently overlapping. It helps you to find any nodes you might have missed in your graph because they were covered by another node. If you move the overlapping node to an empty area, the icon will disappear. Another new indicator is displayed when you have disabled nodes in the scene. To disable a node, right-click on it and uncheck Enable Node Evaluation or use this icon here in the top toolbar. Once a node has been disabled, it gets displayed with a stripe pattern. This is done so that you can distinguish a disabled node from a hidden node. Because if I were to change my graph display options to fade out certain secondary node types until I select them, there are now both faded and disabled nodes in the scene and I can easily tell which ones are the disabled nodes and which ones are simply secondary nodes that drive some parameters inside of a geometry node. The last addition concerns published parameters. I'm just going to publish the length and the radius of this node here to the presets tab. Okay, so the parameters I just published are now available here on the presets tab. Previously, if I had wanted to change the publish parameter, I would have needed to go back to each single node that contained the original parameter and adjust the settings from there. But now I can open the publish param editor directly from here and adjust the name, the grouping and the position in the interface. This also works for meta nodes and components or any other place in the software with publish parameters. So that's it for the small graph improvements in Plan Factory 2021.2. You will see more changes in the next releases as we continue to revamp and refine the node editing workflows. Thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial.